focusing on learning unit six, which is the ledger accounts and trial balances on page 87. Right, so when looking at the introduction here or the schedule contents page here for learning unit six, you'll see it's a lot of revision here. Balancing a ledger account, that you should know. Okay, add up the debits, add up the credits, and compare which item is bigger, and then balance off the accounts. Client ledger accounts, we'll look at that in more detail because you've got the client's books and you've got your books. Then you've got trust credits as ledger, business credits as ledger. Obviously, trust credits refer to the clients. Okay, money that you've been given by them, that's not yours, that's theirs. Then you've got the trial balance, which we've seen before, list of debits and credits. And then you've got some activities and self-assessment questions to look at. Okay, so it's a really short section here. There's not too much new content. Um, the first bit is obviously this, the balancing of the general ledger account. Okay, you've seen a general ledger T account before, so I'm going to use bank as the example. Um, you can have a trust bank account or you can have a business bank account. It doesn't matter which. So let's look at the balancing. Okay, so first thing, balancing the general ledger T accounts. That's important because you are often going to have to balance accounts. It could be relating to the client or the business. It doesn't matter, but the approach is the same. So if I had to draw up a little T account here, and let's let's discuss bank. Let's look at that, and let's look at the trust bank account. Something different. Okay, you know what a normal bank T account looks like: receipts and payments, opening balance, closing balance. Okay, so let's look at a trust. Well, let's look at both bank bracket business. And then let's copy paste this. And then let's also look at a trust bank account. In terms of element, what element is bank? It doesn't matter if it's a trust bank account or if it's a bank account. It's always an asset. Okay, if it's a liability, then it's called a bank overdraft. But bank as it is, as it stands here, is an asset. So that's what we've got here. Okay, and that's what we've got there. So what rule are we going to follow? Debit plus credit minus. That's the rule that's applicable to an asset account. So if they gave you an opening balance, which they normally do, um, let's say end of last month is beginning of this month. So you would then have an opening balance. Let's say first of the 8th or 7th. No, we're in September. Yeah, 8th is fine. Okay, so... First eight balance brought down. Let's keep the numbers small so we can work it out quite easily. 50. Okay, if I'm looking at the business's bank account, well, there are going to be business receipts and business payments. So receipts increase the bank account, payments decrease the bank account. Then you apply your basics. So if I'm looking at the month of August, then we would have recorded all the receipts and all the payments. The cash receipts would have come from the cash receipts journal. And let's assume that was 280. Then you're going to have payments, total payments, and the total payments would have come from the CPJ. And the cash payments would have recorded all the transactions relating to bank credits, okay, i.e. bank decreasing. And let's assume that came out to a balance of, um, let's make it more actually, just so you can see that a business's bank account can change from an asset to liability, it's possible, right, if they've overdrawn. So let's assume they have overdrawn, and let's assume that this was 380. So now what would you do? You would check the left, and you would check the right. If I add up those two amounts, I get 330. And I've got 380. So now I've got a credit side that's bigger than the debit side. So I'm going to write in the total for the bigger amount. And you reference it on both sides. Okay, you write it down on both sides. 
380 is the big amount that goes there and there. Do I have 380 Rand worth of credits? Yes, I have 380 here. So if I've got 380 here, what does that represent? It represents the balances that you've got currently, and if your credit side is bigger, you've paid more than you've received. So that means you're going to carry down or bring down a balance on that side, okay? Because that's the bigger side. Right, do you have 380 on this side? No, I've only got 330. So the balancing figure is going to be the difference. The 380 minus the, three tw uh, the two, two, uh, 280 minus the 50 gives you 50 again. Okay, so that gave us 50. That would have been carried down. Balance carried down. And then you would have brought down a balance for September. First of the ninth, balance brought down. And that would have been the 50 rand here that you would have brought down. But notice now, the bank has a credit balance. So now bank is actually a liability. It's bank overdraft now. Yeah, it's a negative balance in terms of the assets. It's a credit balance in terms of a liability. Okay. If it was a trust bank account, the same thing will apply. Except you're looking at whose money? The clients, exactly. So now, obviously as a law practice, you need to differentiate between your money and the client's money. And there needs to be that separate accounting and separate accounts for the actual cash. Okay, the flow of money between you and the, and the clients. So now, assuming that you've taken on a new client, would you have had an opening balance for the trust bank account? No, you wouldn't have. So now, how does the client deposit money into your trust bank account? Well, they would have debited trust bank accounts, and they would have credited trust creditors. Right, the one is seen as inverted commas, liability increasing. Okay. And the trust bank account is seen as an asset increasing. Okay, it's not your asset, it's your client's asset. Okay, but it's money that you've got in your business, but that's theirs. So it's, it's a bit of a... Um, it doesn't quite meet the definition fully because if you think about it, the trust bank account is actually money that's not yours. Okay, so why would you call it your resource? It's not your resource, it's your client's resource. But remember, you're accounting for the client separate to the business. Okay, that's the only reason why you still look at it as an asset because it's an asset to your client. Trust creditors, that's a liability, okay? Why? Because you owe them, your clients. Right, so it's kind of looking at two things in one. It's looking at your books, but it's taking their perspective into consideration. So now if that's the case, what are you gonna do to your trust bank accounts? Debit trust bank accounts. So what are you gonna do here? Debit trust bank accounts. Sorry? Uh, well, yeah, the trust bank account, but you might, so you as the business might pay something on behalf of your client, and then maybe you'd want to recover that later. Because you don't want a situation where, let's assume there's 50 here, okay? But now, you're going to have to do some work, and the work is going to require 70. So now, are you going to put the client's case on hold just because the client hasn't given you an extra 20? Probably not. Okay. Again, it's up to the business. Okay, you could say, well, no, I'm not going to do any work for this client until they pay me 20 extra. Okay, yeah, well, we're not talking about other clients. Like, we're not talking about someone else's trust account. So I'm not going to credit um, client A's trust account for client B 
that would be bad. Okay, no, this is like your business. So you're running the law practice and you have money sitting in the business's bank account that belongs to the business. It's got nothing to do with any other client. Okay, so now if that's the case, then if you had to use some of your funds to pay for an advocate's um, time because they're going to help you with the case, right? that might be your expense, but if there is an expense that the client is going to have to cover, well, if it's something minor or small, okay, obviously you wouldn't want to do it with big amounts because that's putting your business at risk. Okay, but if it's something minor, um, then I don't see any reason why a business wouldn't be able to, unless um, the rules are specific. We are going to look at the rules in more detail, and you'll see um, they talk about a transfer, okay, transferring um, money between these accounts. Okay, then that we can look at in more detail. Okay, but um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that if the business has its own money and it's representing a client, the client, well then, if the client is short, you'd probably want to ask the client to make payments. Okay, but if time is, an, is a factor, um, practically you'd probably maybe say, well, okay, let's use 20 from the business bank account and let's then recover that from the client. And the client becomes your debtor, basically. Okay, you'd have a debtor, um, client A, because client A now owes you. It's like rendering a service on credit, basically. Okay, kind of. All right, so let's keep it simple. Um, let's just carry on where we were in terms of the trust bank account. So how do we create a trust bank account? We need a client depositing money into that account. So if they do that, we're going to have a credit for the trust creditors and a debit for the trust bank account. And let's say that took place at the beginning of the month. Trust creditors. Um, this would have come from which journal? The trust cash receipts journal. Okay, because it's the client's money that you are receiving. Okay, so that's the first part. Right, are there going to be payments from this account? Yes, there will be. And where would the payments have gone? In the trust cash payments journal. Okay, anything that the client has to pay. So if the client has to pay for something, then you would record that here. So let's assume that for the month of August, there were payments and what are the payments going to do to your to your liability? Increase your liability. A payment, a payment would decrease the trust bank account, right? And that would decrease the amount that you're owing the client. Does that make sense? So this was when the client gave you money, and now if the client is using the money to pay for expenses, what would you do? You would do the opposite you would have to debit the trust creditors and credit the trust bank. Because now you're no longer going to owe them more because money has been used of theirs to do something. Okay, and then the trust bank account is obviously gonna be used to make payment. So this would have decreased it, trust creditors. Trust CPJ. Okay, and that let's say that's 30 or 32. Okay, the numbers are a bit small, but it's fine. Okay, and then obviously you could balance this account off. There'll never be that much in this account, purely because it's specific to a job. Okay, so the client is asking you to do something. Right, you won't see as many transactions here as you would for a business to CPJ or a business to CRJ. Okay, so this side is bigger. The balancing figure would be the difference. And that is something that you would carry down then. Balance carry down. 31st of the 8th. Balance brought down. And this account will remain open for as long as the client is your client. Okay, until you've ended the job or the responsibility or the, or the contract, the agreement, 
um, ultimately, whatever's here would be paid back to the client. Okay, so let's assume that you haven't needed to use all of the money that the client has given you. Okay, then you have to refund the client because it's their money that you've taken as um, safekeeping or as, as um, almost security, if you will, okay, to do work, basically. Okay, so now we've looked at that, balancing the accounts. That's the first thing we need to revise. Here they've given you an example, a business T account. Okay, it's the same, except they've just shown the amount separately. Instead of total receipts or total payments, they've shown every single line item separately. And the reason for that is because they're probably recording this in a general journal. Okay, because in a general journal, you show things separately. Debit this, credit that. Debit this, credit that. Debit this, credit that everything is separate if this came from a cash receipts journal it would have all been grouped as total receipts and you would have had one reference or folio CRJ okay and if it was the payment same thing with here with this um, equipment wages equipment and wages would all be seen as payments right so the payments could all be grouped in one journal the cash payments journal and then you could just show total payments here, representing all the payments. All right, so the only reason why they've shown this is to keep it separate, okay, to show every single line item separate from all of the other transactions. Okay, something else to discuss in terms of theory. We've seen this before, a client ledger. Okay, so do you agree? We're not going to have one client, we're going to have many. So the client ledger a general ledger is a general list of all your separate accounts. Okay, so a client ledger will be a list of all your separate clients. That's all it is. So you'll have T accounts for all the separate clients. That's what you would have. Okay, you'd have one T account for client A, one T account for Client, client B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. The trial balance we've seen before, that's a list of debits and credits. And then you've got an example here. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. Remember, what is the focus going to be? T accounts. Okay, so we're, we're going to practice, obviously, the interpretation. Okay, but we'll just reference the journals that have been created for us. Okay, but let's do the workings. Because the workings help you to create the journals. Once you've got the journals, then it's easy to post. Um, example 6.1. 6.1. Okay, so I'm going to do workings here for this example, and we're going to look at each of these. So the first date. The following information relates to attorney practice, T. Um, VAT vendor is important. Why? Input, output. Okay, don't forget about that. There will be input and output VATs on different transactions relating to the um, to the owner, the business, okay, the, the, the transactions that take place. So number one, pay office rent for August to N per check. If you're paying office rent, which journal? Yeah, business CPJ, correct. So business CPJ, right, and the working would have been debit, the rent expense, expense increase, credit bank why you use the check will there be VAT on a purchase definitely what VAT input VAT so you would have debited input VAT asset increase right so see that's what you would be thinking about that's your knowledge in terms of basics relating to the rules Okay, you need to be able to get the right T accounts from this. Okay, because if you don't, you won't know where to post this. Okay, and the nice thing about this is the working is the posting. Okay, because if I had to post this to the bank T accounts, right, we spoke about the T account for bank. If I had to show the separate, I just want to use one as an example. You saw one in your um, notes. I'm just going to show another one here. If you wanted to post every single line item separately, you can. You don't have to draw up a journal. 
we drew up journals just to make things a bit more organized because now we're grouping similar transactions into similar books okay so let's look at this as being the bank if you had to record these two separately you would have debited those accounts and you're crediting this account bank so when I credit the bank I can't write bank in bank okay it's a reference so you would write rent income here, uh, rent expense here and you'd write input bat here okay because those are the contra accounts and then you put in the amount whatever it is okay I'll revise the workings as well so 3990 is the total that you pay okay remember when you pay your landlord okay in this case in okay when you paid uh, Namiti uh, Namiti is going to obviously charge you 14% VAT or 15% either or it doesn't matter what the rate is okay you times it by 100 you divide it by 114 or 115 depending on what the applicable rate is okay you get that once you've got that you can subtract to get the difference okay what did I use oh I used 115 sorry 114 there we go okay right, yeah, it looked strange with the decimals yeah, you're still using 14 percent okay so this is what I'm going to record in my books and then if I had to draw up a T account and I had to show this separately I would then show three and a half here and 490 there because if I add up the two amounts together that gives me the credit bank 390,000 okay see that's how this working is everything okay if you can get workings you're more than halfway there in terms of a ledger in terms of a journal it helps a lot um, and you don't have to study this okay you study the six rules and then you practice applying it okay I didn't like try to wreck my brain and think what can I well if I have a rent expense and I'm paying cash now what did I study debit this credit that I didn't do that I just thought about it logically okay what are those accounts see elements that's important okay that's why we need to approach it the right way okay and that's always the right approach it's the better approach I'm not saying that you can't study accounting and still do well you can but it's a bit of a challenge um, doing it this way is a bit easier okay the next one pay the increase in the deposit for rents again per check okay so now you guys tell me what is there do we have an income and expense capital drawings what do we have hey what do we have a deposit is not an expense what is the deposit exactly there we go okay a deposit is something that you can get back so if there's a deposit so the landlord is probably going to ask for a deposit they normally do okay why to protect them in case the tenant runs away okay so if the tenant ends the relationship can the landlord keep the deposit no okay they haven't earned it so here you've paid the increase in the deposit for the office rents the first one was paying for the rent. The second was increasing the deposit. So this is probably a long relationship. And there was a deposit made maybe two years ago. And now, because maybe the rent has gone up, they've asked for an increase in the deposit. And what do we need to do? Record it. So where are we going to put this? Are we paying? Yes, we are. OK, is this affecting the bank? Yes, it is. Right debit what deposit for rent or rent deposit there will never be any VAT on this why it's a deposit it's just money that you've given them to keep in case of something happening okay so that would be the working right again this is more practice I, I'm gonna obviously always do some of this with you every week because it helps you as well in terms of revision um, if you're struggling with this then you need to go back to those rules that we've got okay that one page in your notes okay debit this credit that debit this credit that plus minus plus minus plus minus right so the deposit meets the definition of an asset asset increase that's why we've got a debit there okay that was for four thousand 
Levy fees for services rendered to P and received payments. Keyword, fees. Services rendered even if you want to, that's also fine. And P, lease. Okay, so what are they to you? Your customer, right, your client. Your debtor, if this was on credit. Was this on credit? Yeah, they said you received payment. Okay, this looks very similar to the previous chapter as well. Uh, I think they, they probably copy-paste the examples, hey? I think this was the same example from five or four when we looked at this. Did we? Okay. Um, but yeah, um, chapter six is obviously the T account. So uh, six is what I'm looking at now to draw up the T accounts. Okay. All right. So that's fine. We've got that. Uh, let's see week four. Example 6.1. Okay. Yeah, we actually have looked at this. Okay. That's there. From there. Yeah. So I think let me copy this and just paste it here. Okay. There we go. So that's what we've looked at already. Because you know, that was looking, there's like deja vu there. Okay, so now we, we know what we've got okay, in terms of that. So the rest we can check. We got up until 4, 5, 6, 10, yes. 11, 12, 13. Okay, purchase milk and sugar from Petty Cash. You would have debited milk and sugar. <coughs> you can group this as maybe staff refreshments if they give you a heading for it, if they tell you what columns to use, but it's an expense that's increasing. Then you would have credited, uh, debited as well, input VAT. Uh, but this is for the staff. Is this for the staff? Purchase milk and sugar from Petty Cash. This is probably for the staff, so then you wouldn't do that. Why? It's a non-allowable expense. It's not for business purposes. It's for enjoyment. Okay, so yeah, be careful with that. And then you would have credited the Petty Cash. Right, that would have been 10. 15. Debit of fees charged for collection from L. You're debiting a client in respect of fees. So that would have gone to a fees journal. Okay. Have you received payment? Okay. This is an outstanding fee in terms of income that you've received or that you are supposed to be receiving from your client. Okay. So you're debiting George. Debit the client. Credit the fee income. Okay, client control could be viewed as an asset. Fee income, income, obviously. That here, yes, because this was a fee, so there would be output VAT, liability increase. Okay, there's the working for that one. Okay, let's get the amount. This was 741. 741 is what they owe you. The VAT exclusive is 650. Let's check the next one. 20. Pay a deposit for purchasing property on behalf of A. Issued a trust check. That's important. Trust check. Because now you know this is a client expense. They're paying the deposit. So you would have debited the trust creditors. Liability decrease. Credit the trust bank accounts as a decrease. Four, five, six hundred. Right, so what are you doing here? You're accounting for what you've paid on behalf of your clients. Okay. Pay the following from Petty Cash, tea and coffee, pens and pencils. Okay, I'm gonna copy paste this working. Because it's similar, uh, there's no date here, so we'll assume the 20. Okay, 
Okay, the one will have VAT and the one won't. When you buy pens and pencils, we consider that stationary. So you would add stationary increase, there would have been input VAT here. Right, so there's the one. Debit station, debit input, credit petty cash. The other one wouldn't have VAT because it's a non-allowable expense, more tea and coffee. Or office refreshments, depending. Or staff refreshments, either or. It just depends what columns or headings they give you. If they don't give you anything, then you could group it yourself, okay? As staff refreshments. Or you could just leave it as is. Okay, if, if a business wanted to be very, very, very detailed, they could identify everything. The tea, separate from the coffee, separate from everything else. Right, received a check from P lease as a payment on his account. Okay, so we spoke about the client earlier. There's the client's account. They were owing you money. Right, this is going to go to a cash receipts journal, and this is for receiving a check from P and uh, in, as payment on his account. So that's a normal receipt. That would have been debit the bank, asset increase, credit the client control account. That's the decrease. Pay costs relating to the divorce case of Y. Is this your expense or the client's? The client's expense. So client, trust, CPJ, 25. Here you would have debited the trust uh, creditors because you're decreasing the liability. So it actually would have been this. Would have been that. Okay, debit trust creditors, credit trust bank. Why? It's the client's money paying for the client's divorce case. Okay, pay registration of a letter to L from Petty Cash. Yo, this is a registration of a letter to L from Petty Cash. So that's going to affect your client control accounts. Petty Cash. So you would have credited Petty Cash as a decrease. Credit Petty Cash as a decrease. Um, this was for a registration letter of a client to lease from Petty Cash. So you're paying their expense. 25. A uh, cost related to divorce case? Probably not. Uh, oh, reg the registration. Pay registration letter uh, to lease. So if it's to lease, you're charging their account uh, their accounts going up, uh, it would be seen like a similar to a sale. Probably could they could be okay. They could be bad there. Why? Because it's rendering a service basically. Okay, but you you're paying for it from your petty cash, but you're incurring it um, to their accounts. Okay. Yeah, we'll check just now. Um, let's just do all the work and then we'll we'll go back and we'll look at what we've got. Okay, pay short-term insurance per check. Business CPJ, that's an easy one. Right, so that you would have done this, and would there have been VAT on a business expense in terms of insurance? Definitely. So you would have done this, and this would have been replaced with the word insurance. Day 25 still. Okay, 27. Pay the following, water and electricity, telephone, salaries and wages. All right, so all of this will look similar to this. Some will have VAT, some won't have VAT. Okay, all of this was a payment. So water, electricity and telephone has VAT. The 
last one doesn't, so you can eliminate that, and you would have just debited the salaries and wages. Okay, salaries and wages have other taxes, pay as you earn. Right, that would have been the workings for 27. 28, you're charging an overdue account with interest at 20% per annum for nine months. She owes the firm 4,000. Okay, there's a question mark here because you have to calculate the amount. Right, so when looking at interest, interest is calculated using principal times rate times time. This is a little bit of financial mathematics times time. Okay, so the, the interest that's applicable here would have been how much did we or did she owe 4,000 times the rate is 20% times 9 months, 9 over 12. Okay, so the answer is 600. Okay, what are you doing? You're charging this to whose account? The client. So the client control account will increase. That was obviously interest that you were earning. No VAT on interest. Okay, interest is actually considered a. Um, what's the right terminology? Exempt. Okay, you get exempt. You get zero rated. You get standard rated. Okay. Next, twenty nine. Working for twenty nine. Purchase stationery on credit. That's an easy one. Debit stationary, debit input VAT, credit creditors. That would have gone to your normal creditors journal or purchases journal or general journal and then it will just look like that, exactly like that. Okay. And then the last one, I think. Is it the, is it the last one? Yeah. Okay, the last one is issue check number 3534 to make up the petty cash impressed amount. Okay, so when you have an impressed amount, it's just topping up the petty cash. That's all it is. Right, so when they say restore the impress or the petty cash, it's topping up the petty cash at the end of every month. So we start with the we start with the same amount of petty cash every month. Um, the the question mark obviously you would have to go back and you have to look at all their petty cash payments, right? So maybe just to discuss that quickly. This transaction was very important, the one where you create a petty cash. That would have been transaction number. Where was the one they created? Okay, maybe not here then. So they didn't show you. Then you'd have to look at the trial balance to see what petty cash you started with. Okay, here's the trial balance. Where's petty cash? Oh, there we go. There's petty cash. Okay, it's a thousand. Right, so in order to work this out, what would you do? You would take a thousand and you would subtract everything that you bought from the petty cash, exactly. Right, so you would have minus all the petty cash payments. Let's quickly show that. Um, okay, I'm going to just do the working for us. 1,000 minus. Okay, yeah, you guys have this in front of you. So, is 57, 399? Yes, 399. Minus 399, minus 57. What else? One one four minus two eight five minus. That's fine. I can give you the answer. Just give me the amounts. Eighteen minus. Is that it? Okay. Gives you one twenty seven. Okay. So assuming those are all the petty cash payments, 
petty cash balance prior to the year end or month end is one two seven okay you have to top up back to a thousand that's what that means in press system okay and if that's correct then they would have shown that in the actual journal that was the last transaction right so let's have a look this was the business cash receipts journal. Our business cash receipts journal recorded all our receipts. Okay, so here we had two, day 21 and day 23. Yeah, there's day 23. That was a receipt from our client bank, debit bank, credit the client control account. account. Okay, so what am I doing in the business cash receipts? I'm debiting bank. Okay, because bank is going up and I'm crediting the creditors control if I'm receiving money from them. Okay, wouldn't receive money from anywhere else. So that was the only one that we had there in terms of receipts and payments or receipts. Okay, in terms of payments, that's what we've got there. Okay, so we've got the office rent, that was transaction one. The rent would have gone there. Yeah, the deposit would have gone there. The advertising is the next one. Yeah, we had that. Uh, this is petty cash, PCJ. Client control fee income, fee journal, FJ. Trust creditors, trust bank, that would have been trust bank going down. Trust CPJ. Petty Cash Journal. Okay, here's another Petty Cash Journal. Client Control Bank going up. That's the Cash Receipts Journal that we saw earlier. Trust Bank going down. That would have been Trust Cash Payments Journal. Petty Cash Journal. Okay, there we go. More banks. So 25. 25 is 25. Okay, now we're, we're looking at the rest. Okay, so we are at the right spot. Okay, business cash payments journal. Business cash payments journal. Business cash payments journal. Right, so 27, there were two. Well, three, and the wages. Yeah, well, we've got all of them. Okay, so yeah, so everything was fine there. That was fine, that was fine. Right. We've got all of that, we've got all of that, we've got all of that. Okay, the petty cash was 873 is that the difference let's check 1000 minus 2 127 873 yes that's correct okay so 873 this is the top up okay so all the workings are correct so what can i do here debit the petty cash credit the bank and I would have shown 873 that was the last transaction okay so the reason why we did that was to go back and to check that we had all the correct payments for the petty cash right. is that okay pardon Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Oh, you're right. I didn't discuss this one. I discussed that one. I need to look at this one. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we missed one. Write the account of J. Taylor off as irrecoverable. Okay, so let me just insert that here. Bad debt is an expense. Expenses increase on the debit side. So you'd have debited bad debts or credit losses. And you would have credited the debtors. Okay, the debtors account. Was this a client though? Yes, it was. So if it's a client, then this would have been client control account. Which is the same as debtors, but 
obviously you're using the right vocabulary. Okay, there won't be any VAT there. Well, actually there is VAT there, but I don't think they account for the VAT at this stage. Okay, uh, SARS will allow you to claim VAT on your bad debts. Okay, or your discount allowed. Okay, so journal-wise, that would have gone to the general journal. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's carry on looking at those T accounts because then we can do the recording. Okay, trust cash receipts journal. There was just one for maths. Was that the only one? Where was that? There's it. There. Day 10. Perfect. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go and check the other two. Trust cash payments journal. Okay, that was the trust cash payments. So the client pay. Let's see, where did the client pay? Here, yeah, the client paid on day 20. Did they record that? Yes, they did. And trust cash payments and also on day 20. Day 20, I've got, oh, well, that's the one I just said, sorry. Day 20, that's fine. And then trust cash payments, day 25. That's there, perfect. And that was it. All right, so those two are fine. Nothing wrong with that. Fees journal is what you earn. So there were three here. Let's check. Day one, did we have the fee? Yeah, FJ, client control account. That's fine. That's good. Um, the second, did we have a fee there? Where's the second? This was the second. Um, where's the second? Did I not write that one down? Oh, I wrote it down here. There's it. The 19,000. Oh, that was that was one. Okay, yeah, this was the one we spoke about in terms of the business cash receipts. So I used business cash receipts here. In, in their answer, they showed the amount owing in terms of fees, then they paid it, okay, or received it. Okay, that's what they did. They captured it twice because of that source document, I think. Right, and then you had the other one, which was Rogers. Yeah, Rogers is there. That's fine. There's the fees journal. Okay, that was the, C the fees journal. Yeah, so I had shown this in the business CRJ. You could have also shown it in the fees journal as well. Okay, if you captured their fee and then you received the fee. Uh, and then there was one more. Here's it, the 15th. Yeah, that was fine. Perfect. Okay, so everything's good there. Petty cash. Let's just check them. Okay, we have the first one was the 350. That's there. That's good. Petty cash was fine. Petty cash for milk, 11. That's good. Petty cash, yeah, for tea and coffee, that's good. The 20th, and for pencils and pen stationery. Okay, see, they've even used the wording from the question. So you guys don't even have to take it that far and call it stationery or call it um, refreshments. Okay, they've actually used the word entertainment to describe it. See that? Okay, for these two. Right, you would have to have been told what columns to draw up for those um, journals if you were asked to use specific columns. Okay, you can't smell and decide just from a blanket question or blank question um, if I'm going to have the same account names for all of them. Okay, you can't use a blanket template for everything. Um, so just be careful with that. They need to tell you what column names. See, all of this needs to be given Okay, before you actually create it, if you are going to be drawing up one that looks like this. Right, and then you had day 25, which was at last CPJ. we have it yes we did okay there's the client control and okay, that's fine everything looks good and then you've got general journal that was for the interest interest is it that's good and stationary purchase on credit okay so stationary purchase on credit I think I said CJ cash creditors journal where is it uh, let's go up what date was this 
the 29th, so it's further down actually. Okay, I didn't actually write a journal. Okay, that could have been journal journal, so you could have left it as is, that's journal journal, like it's in your book, or creditors journal. And then you would have shown that the stage fee, the VAT, and the outstanding creditor. And then you had the credit losses, which we spoke about. That's the bad debt credit losses client control. That's fine. Okay, the VAT is there. I see they do they do test it, which is fine. So we can we can include that. Okay, so we can actually add that here. Debit input VAT, asset increase. Right, just an asterisk here. SARS will allow. an input VAT claim on bad debts. Okay, so that's fine. Right, so that's everything. And that's the hard part. That's the long part. That takes a lot of time to do because you need to draw up all the columns. Once you've got all the columns, then we can draw up the T account. Okay, which tier accounts do they ask for in this question? Let's have a look. Where's the instructions? Here. Yeah, so they wanted all the journals. So the journals we've looked at. Are you guys happy with the journals? Great. Now we need to look at the general ledger. Okay, the general ledger will be a tier account for different accounts. Okay, so you're going to have a tier account for bank, a tier account for trust. Okay, so those are the accounts that I want to look at, the, the more important ones. Trust, creditors, ledger, let's draw up that tier account. Client accounts, let's draw up that tier account. Uh, bank, let's draw up that tier account. Okay, so uh, we need journals in order to draw up tier accounts. So that's the first journal that I'm going to look at. Business cash payments journal. I'm going to copy my bank accounts here. Copy, paste. Okay, and I'm not going to reference, well, I'm going to reference the journals and I'm going to reference the working so you can see how the two go hand in hand. Okay. Right, so all of that needs to go and we'll put in our own amounts. All of that needs to go. We'll update and correct everything. Okay, so there we go. Business bank account, trust bank account. Right, do I need opening balances? Definitely. Okay, where do I get opening balances? From the trial balance. So let's look for opening balances. Here's Truta, right? Notice the date is end of July. End of July is beginning of August. So I'm looking at journals for the next month. Capital, I'm not going to draw up. Drawings, not. Client control, yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show you obviously I'm not going to do all of them it's going to take way too long okay let's just do these ones the client control the trust bank account the trust creditors the business bank account the rest you can just reference and look in your textbook they're actually quite straightforward um, it's the ones that relate to the trust accounting that we need to obviously look at in more detail okay so those are the four accounts we're going to draw up we've already got two we've got the bank the business bank and we've got the trust bank. We need two more accounts. Okay, so I'm just going to copy paste. Two more T's account, two more T accounts. Let's do that. Copy, paste. Okay, client control. Inverted commas, debtors. It's like debtors. And trust creditors. Trust creditors control accounts. Okay, you can use trust creditors control, that's fine. Okay, control just means total, means everything. Okay, so those are tier accounts that you would have to have created, produced. Right, so obviously we're going to be taking from our journals. There's the first journal. Right, so what happens to bank here in this journal? Increases or decreases? Yes, the first journal. Increases. So where does bank increase? Correct. Do I have a balance for bank? Yes. 
Okay, we spoke about that. There's it there. 80,000 business bank accounts. So when starting out any T account, you're going to look for a balance. 1st of August, balance brought down. From the question, there's the balance brought down. There's the opening balance. Okay, 80,000. Right, then you know from your bank recon that receipts increase the bank, payments decrease the bank. Right, so what happened here? Well, we received money from who? The clients. Okay, cash was received from the clients. So what's happening to your creditors control? Clients control. It's decreasing. Do you agree? Okay. Clients control account is your debtors. So debtors decrease on which side? The credit side. Okay. We so we spoke about the working for it. We need to record the entry. Okay. That also has an opening balance. Client control. There's the opening balance. Fifty-five thousand four hundred and two. opening balance for the client control. Okay, what did we say the receipt is going to do to my debtors? Decrease. What do we say my receipts are going to do to my bank? Increase. Okay, we're going to show it separately because you've got separate journals here. So in bank, you're going to reference the client control. See, there's the contra account. Now you can see the debit there and the credit here. That's important. Every debit has a credit, even in the T account. So here, by business bank, here, by client control, you're going to reference it. Uh, what was this month or amount? The month was a August. The amount was 20,406. See, there's the total. Those totals are important. Because the business is not going to record every single one separately because all of them have the exact same effect. So they're going to show that here. 31st of the 8th, total receipts, twenty four oh six. That amount will be referenced here, 2406, client control, and you would have referenced this as 31st of the 8th, bank. Asterisk, the business's bank account, be careful. If it was trust bank account, then it would be something different. Okay, it's the business's bank account. Right, and that's what you're going to be doing with journals. You're taking journals and you're posting it through to the account. Okay, it's, it's exactly the same as the working. The working actually helps the posting because then you know what to do but you know what to credit. Okay, so if I go back and I look at my my working, what did my working say? What did my working say here? What happens to bank? It increases. What happens to trust creditors? It decreases. Uh, this was the receipt, though. That was the one that was paid. Uh, that was the trust cash receipts journal. Sorry, wrong one. Not trust cash receipts. Business cash receipts. Where's the business cash receipts? Okay, here's the business cash receipts. Here's the business cash receipts. Let's look for one that I haven't highlighted. Business cash receipts. There. Okay, so what did that transaction say? It said debit the bank, credit the client control. So what did I do to bank? I debited the bank and I credited the client control. Okay, maybe we could have added that as well here, client control. 
Okay, because that's actually the reference that you're using for that particular account. Okay, next one. Business cash payments journal. Do you agree every single one of those accounts are T accounts? Yes? Every single one of those accounts are going to have a debit? Yes? Why? Because it's the cash payments. Okay, in your notes we summarized, we said, in a cash payments journal, bank is credited. Everything else is debited. If there's going to be VAT, you have to show VAT separately. Okay, so here you've got bank. Bank is going up or down? It's going down. So on this side, you're going to show that. No. Bank is going to decrease. Bank is going to decrease. So if I'm looking at the debit and credit, what would I have debited? The expense or the asset or the something. These things. And then I would have debited what? Yes. Okay, so debit this. Debit that. And credit this. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you're asking, am I going to put the VAT inclusive? Well, what is the answer? You're crediting bank and you're debiting VAT. That's only half of it. The other half is debit the account and credit the bank. So does the bank decrease with the VAT inclusive or the VAT exclusive? VAT exclusive? No. VAT exclusive and VAT is VAT inclusive. So is bank going to go up and down? It's going to go down. Okay. That's going to go up. That's going to go up. Okay. So both of these amounts are going to affect bank. Is that okay? Right, so what am I going to show? VAT inclusive or VAT exclusive? VAT inclusive. Those are the amounts that I'm going to show in bank. Okay, so bank would have gone up with all of them. So total, the thing is, you would have literally have done this. Let me just show you something here quickly. 31st or the 1st. What accounts did I have there? Office rent. Okay, then I would have copy pasted this and then pasted this. And every single one of these would have been what? A credit in the bank account. Does that make sense? Okay, because that's what we said we we're going to be doing because that was what we had when we had a transaction, right? Let's go back. Let's just take any one of these. Let's take this one, for example. Okay, so what happens to bank here? It's credited. Why is it credited? Because of the insurance and the input VAT. Does that make sense? Does that working make sense? Okay, so if that's the case, what do I do to bank? I credit the bank. And I'm crediting the bank because of the insurance and the output. So, if you had to do this separately, you would do it for every single line item. Okay, but that's very time consuming, and you can then just use the total. But when you did the bank recon, we showed the total, because we added everything up and we used the columns. Right, so if I just show one of them, let's use the one that I just looked at, insurance. Okay, I would have debited insurance, and I would have credited bank. There's the credits. Is there VAT on insurance? Yes. Then I would have debited input VAT and credited bank. And then I would have shown that amount. Uh, what date was this? Insurance, day 25. And the amount, day 25, 1710. So 1500 and 210. See, if you add up those two amounts, do you get 1710? Yes. Okay, so that's recording this one. That's the one. Okay, so I'm recording every single one of those line items separately. 
you can do that but that's going to look very 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 untidy okay it's better just to show what the totals okay and that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to show the total okay all i was doing there is just to show you that you can capture it separately every single item separately one item one item one item one item one item okay where do you get the workings from your notes okay there's a debit credit there's a debit credit there's a debit credit all of those debit and credits help you with the t accounts as well okay so i'm just going to put that here 31st of the 8th total payments asterisks could have been shown separately i.e debit and credit 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 for every single transaction I'm just going to show the one total. So the total payments. How much was the total payments amounting to? Well, in terms of sundry, that was one five. Well, the total seventeen six five three. Seventeen six five three. You need to show the VAT separate. Okay, and then you would have VAT here. What VAT? Input VAT. And the input VAT would have been the 1071. Right, and then the total, if you add them up, gives you the 18724. Okay. Right, so um, how did they do it here? Did they show a total or did they show one by one by one? Okay, they just showed a total. Yeah, no, you have to show the VAT separate. It's a separate tier account. Okay, why? Well, do you agree? I'm going to have another. So let me just show you that. I would have had this sitting in my general ledger as a tier count. And then what would I have done? I would have referenced bank for all the different items. Yeah, that control is looking at input and output altogether. Okay, but it's better to show them separately because input is different to output. Input is an asset. Output is a liability. Okay, you can then take input and output and you can show it and transfer it to a control account. Okay. Yeah, so that would have been the VAT and the VAT would have been this. The okay, because that would have been my debit okay and then this would have been my credits okay input band would have been there but it would have been for all the different line items here you could have had all the different line items like what i tried to show you earlier okay line by line by line insurance all of these see i've highlighted it here all of these could have been written as separate line items here as separate amounts, 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 amounts. Okay, um, and that's that's actually a better tier account because then you're showing everything. Uh, but if you just look, if you just look at the totals, and the reason why they're doing that is because of this. See totals, right? They're taking these totals, and they're referencing those totals in the tier account. That's fine because the effect is exactly the same, and that's what I've showed here. There's my total payments, and there's my input VAT. Everyone's still with me? Questions? Right, good. Next journal. What journal? Trust Cash Receipts Journal. So if this is the Trust Cash Receipts Journal, it's going to affect what? The Trust Bank Account. Here they should have written the word Trust Bank Account. Okay, you're not debiting bank, you're debiting Trust Bank Account. So am I going to record this in or on the debit side yes it would have gone here there was only one hey yes so we can just record it as is so in the trust bank account you would have recorded a debit for the trust bank account of 456 well if there is a balance then there will be a balance was there a balance let's go back and check Yes, there was. Okay, yeah, there's the balance. 75, 
from the trial balance. That's correct. We need to show that. Copy paste, balance brought down, 75. And then the 456. Right, what is this going to show? It's going to show the payments, uh, receipts. Okay, notice I call it trust creditors. Why? Because it's the client's money, it's not ours. Okay, so we can't call this total receipts for the business. It's total receipts for the client. Okay, so total trust creditors there, 456. Okay, so if I highlight that, this would have come from the trust cash receipts journal. And that debit needs to have a credit. So if that's the debit, here's the credit in the trust creditors. Trust creditors might also have a balance, depending on the question. Um, it probably did, right? Okay, so let's go get the balance. Trust creditors, there's the balance. It's also 75. Okay, that's good. Why? Because the trust credit is what you owe them, and the trust bank account is what you have in the account. See, that's theory. Okay, there's more theory in the next chapter. Uh, we'll look at later. Um, but I'll mention it now. Uh, well, what you owe them is what you've got from them. Well, you do have to pay them back if you don't use all of the money. Yeah. Yeah, but it must balance. So that's the key. So you have to have the same amounts there. See, this amount there should be the same as the amount there. Why? Because you create the trust bank from the trust creditors. Okay. And then obviously there's going to be payments and receipts and all of that stuff. And at the end of the day, it's going to balance out. It must. Okay, because what you collect from your client must be paid out in terms of their payments or given back to them. Okay. Yeah, it's actually not that bad. It's just thinking again along the lines of what's yours and what's theirs. That's all. Okay, so what was, what was I discussing here? More money coming from the client. Okay, so I wrote down the debit. I need to write down the credits. And then you would have referenced it the same except trust bank accounts trust cash four five six okay what happens here should happen there as well okay we've looked at another journal we can tick that one let's see yeah we've covered that now we need to look at this Okay, so those are the ones that we need to look at now. This is focusing on what? The trust cash payments journal. So when I look at that trust cash payment, I know this is money that the client is having to pay. So am I going to affect the bank? Yes, but it'll be the trust bank account again. Trust bank account because you're using their money to pay for their legal work, okay? Right, and are you gonna owe them more or less? You're gonna owe them less. Okay, so earlier when we looked at the workings, I said we we're going to debit the trust creditors. Okay, that was one of the workings. And we said we were gonna credit the trust bank. Okay, now you can see it, but in a journal format. Okay, so in the journal format, the same thing applies, except you've got columns instead of debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit. Okay, all of these are going to be debits, all of these are going to be credits because the bank goes down and the trust creditors goes down. Liability decrease, asset decrease. Okay, for the reasons we spoke about earlier. Okay, so what am I going to post? I'm only going to post those figures, the totals, the 46056. Okay, where is that going to go? It's going to go here. The trust bank account is going to decrease because of the trust cash payments journal. Okay, client payments, client money being used. So 31st slash 8, 
trust, creditors, payments. You can't even write that word if you want to. And then this one would have been trust, creditors, total trust. Oh, I just wrote total. We can eliminate that. We can just say trust, creditors, receipts. Because okay, that's actually what it is. That's the receipt, that's the payments. This would have come from the trust cash payments journal and whatever the amount was. 46056. 46056. Okay. This must be referenced there. So you'll have the same amount there at the bottom, and you would have had 31st of the 8th, you would have had trust bank account from the trust cash payments journal. Right, so there's the debit, there's the credit. See, even with T accounts, you need to have debits and credits. Next journal, the fees journal. Okay, so with the fees journal, you are earning income from customers, but if I'm looking at inverted commas fees journal, this is similar to a debtor's journal. Okay, the reason why I'm saying that is because you still have a cash receipts journal which is separate. Okay, so you can record the fee and then receive it. Record the fee and then receive it. Okay, so if you're charging a fee, it's outstanding until you receive it. Okay, that's the approach that they've taken in this example. Okay, in one of them, um, the first one, let's just go back to the question and I'll show you what I mean here. This one, here, that's the one, asterisk. Okay, this is the one that they recorded twice, but it's on the same day. I just recorded it once as fees received, CRJ, debit the bank, credit the basically okay they've decided to show it and then show it separately it's fine there's nothing wrong with that it's just it's just more detail more details good if you want to show the fee and then the receipt there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's actually better okay right so if I'm looking at this the fees journal you can see that I've got totals here Okay, when interpreting the journal, I'm thinking about my working. So if I have a fee that's being charged to a client, the fee would have been credited because the fee is the income. The VAT would have been, we need to add here, output VAT. Okay, the reason why that's output is because you are rendering a service and you are getting paid 15%. That it's not yours, it's SARS's, so it's a liability, it's the credits, and then the client control is the debit because the client owes you and they're going to pay you eventually. Okay, and that relates to this. Okay, so the reason why I did this earlier with you, okay, and maybe even you did it later on or uh, at home. Today, where's the um, here's it? Then there's the one. Okay, see, there's the working. Okay, debit client control, credit fee income, credit output VAT. Right, if I've got this working, then I can do the posting quite easily. Okay, debit client control. So, what am I going to do on the client control account? Debit it, and I'm debiting the client control account because. Because I've charged a fee to the customer. Okay, so 31st of the 8th, fee income, fees journal, FJ, 31st of the 8th, output VAT, fees journal. Okay, and we'll take the totals from the journal, fees, 18550. That two five nine seven. 
2597, that's correct. Okay, what I do want to show you here on the right, you don't have to do this though, I'm just showing it to you just for additional understanding. If I had to show the T account for fees income, and if I had to show the account for output VAT, there might be balances here for these accounts as well, um, but there's the debit, so in the fees income I'm going to have the credit, and I'll reference that with the client control account right fees journal does that make sense okay because every debit must have a credit even for something like this okay then the same thing with this just for additional understanding in the client control account you're showing output that there's a separate line item because it's a separate account and then in your separate account for output that you're going to show it there and then you would have referenced it Client control account. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that's there just because, just so to help you. Um, the key is that account. Okay, you're probably going to get asked these accounts. Why? Because they're specific to your practices, right? So they're not really going to ask you about drawing up this account. Okay, I doubt they're going to ask you to draw up a fee income account or an output bat account. Okay, but it's just the contra account, that's all. Okay, just remember that in the client control account, you must reference the contra accounts. So you don't write down the same heading here. Okay, you won't see client control here because it's referencing a separate account. So as long as you've got different account names here in the account, then you're fine. Okay. Alright, then the last bits. Petty Cash Journal and the General Journal. All I'm going to be looking at here are amounts that affect my bank. So do you agree Petty Cash, in terms of the Petty Cash Journal, is going to affect the Petty Cash always? It'll be debit Petty Cash. The only time where we'll have bank being affected here is if I'm creating Petty Cash. Okay, but if I create Petty Cash, where would I have shown that? in the business cash receipts journal or the business cash payments journal um, this was the amount that was um, given to the actual petty cash this is the petty cash journal bank this was the top up right yeah exactly it's a typo it should be cash payments business cash payments journal yeah we found a mistake in the study guide okay it should be business cpj okay um, let's see if there's anything here. Postage, milk, tea, pens. Okay, we're not doing any of that. Okay, but lease we are. Okay, what is lease? A client. Okay, so that one is worthwhile discussing because this is something specific to this, the client account, client control account. Okay, so if I'm looking at the cash, uh, not cash, petty cash journal. Okay, the petty cash journal is showing me all the payments that came out of the physical cash. Okay, so I gave physical cash to pay for postage. I gave physical cash to pay for milk and sugar and tea and coffee, etc., etc. When I reached day 25, I gave a payment to someone on behalf of a client. So, is the client going to owe us this? Yes. Okay, this was going to the client control account. So petty cash would have decreased, so credit the petty cash, and then you would have debited the client control account. Okay, because this is an amount that's owed by the client for having done something. Okay, so over here.
we're going to record twenty five slash eight petty cash petty cash journal eighteen. Right, then you've got a note about the interest, okay? Client's control account interest received. Okay, we spoke about this. This is interest that you're charging to a client's account, so you get the benefits. If you're getting the benefit, you're going to collect from your clients. So we need another line here. What date was that? 28. Interest, income, general journal, 600. Okay, so these are just other other transactions that can affect your T accounts. Okay, here we had stationery that was bought on credit. Stationery is a T account, so you would have debited the stationery, you would have um, debited the VAT, and you would have credited the creditors. This one, does this affect a client? Yes, it does. Okay, we were writing off bad debt for a client that wasn't going to pay us or can't pay us. So what do I do to the client control account? I credit it. Okay, you're crediting the client control account and you're debiting the credit losses in the VAT, okay, which are separate T accounts. Okay, so with this one, you're going to be crediting the client control account and you're crediting the client co control account because of the credit losses and the VAT. So this was on what day? 29, 8. Bad debts or credit losses, and then 29 slash 8. They do look at the VAT here, so let's put it in. Input VAT. All of this is general journal. General journal, general journal. And then you'd have to show the separate amounts. Um, 1, 3, and 182. I think that's it. Yes, okay, then you've just got a list of creditors, a list of clients, and then you've got the general ledger. Okay, that's obviously the solution. Okay, so let's balance off our accounts. Okay, accounts that are worth balancing off, this one, the bank. Okay, would you be able to balance this off? Do you want to try? Okay, go for it. What is the balance brought down? Where is the balance carried down? Let's just do one. Let's see if you can get it right, and I'll just copy paste it for the rest. Okay, and you can check it.
you have a balance yet for this one? What did you get? Okay, let's check. Okay, so you would have identified the debit side as being the bigger side. You would have written that total on both sides. Then you would have taken that total and you would have subtracted those two credits to get the missing figure difference. Okay, once you've got that figure, you write it down on both sides because you carry down the balance. So on the 30th of the 8th, balance carried down, and then on the 1st of the 9th, balance brought down. Okay, and you would do that for all of them, even for trust bank accounts, okay, and client control. Right, so these I'll just um, discuss and go through them now, just so you have it. Um, you can actually check the answers if you want to. It's probably the same. We'll confirm just now. Okay. Add up those two. That's bigger. So I reference that there. Okay, then what do I do? I work out the difference. Okay, carry down, brought down. So it's going to be this minus that. And currently, in terms of money, that is, that is the client's, um, is sitting at... 29,400. Okay, so this will always be your client's money. Unless you've got to pay it back. Okay, and then it becomes, well, then you then you don't have a trust creditor account. Okay, do you agree that balance should be the same as which other balance? This one. Right? Because it's exactly the same. So if you've done the one, you can just copy-paste your answer is what I'm going to do here. Okay, so bands brought down, bands carried down, exactly the same. it's on the credit side. Okay, and then the last account, this one had quite a few things, so let's balance this one together. If I'm looking for the bigger side, I can see the debit side's bigger, so I would sum up those figures. I would write down that total on both sides, and then I would carry down a balance on the credit side, and bring down a balance on the debit side. Okay, the difference here would have been that amount minus the sum of all my credit. Okay, and then you would have had an amount there. So that would be what the clients are owing you in terms of your entitlement. Okay, this is what you've earned as a business. Remember, that's not their money. Okay, it's just theory-wise. The client control account shows you your money. Okay, it shows you what you are entitled to from them. Okay. Are you guys happy with this now? All right. It's not that bad. It might have seemed a little bit confusing beforehand, maybe if you've gone through this yourselves. Um, it's just keeping your business's record separate from the clients and then remembering what the purposes are uh, for these accounts that you've got here. Okay, so let's check. Client control. Perfect. Trust bank account, 29400 That's good. Trust creditors, that's also good. Yeah, you can see it's exactly the same. Must be. Okay, and then the business bank account, was the balance right? Let's check. What is our balance? 81682 Perfect. That's it. Okay, and they've even given you all the other two accounts. So if you want to, you can even go and look at some of those other ones as well. Okay, I don't think they'll give you too many of the other accounts purely because it's a lot of referencing um, and it's not very specific to the law practitioners okay, for your module. All right, so I doubt you're going to see like a tier account for bank. Ah, not bank, land and buildings, equipment, furniture. You will see one for bank because bank will be something that you would have to adjust for. Okay, happy with that section. All right, and that's it. There's just a lot more tier accounts as you can see. And there might have been another example, yeah, there was. 
6.2 I think oh learning unit 6.1 uh, they should have labeled that 2 I think okay it might have been a typo again but it doesn't matter um, this one you guys can have a look at in your own time and see if you'd be able to maybe recreate it it's, just, it's just exactly the same lots and lots and lots of transactions what do you do analyze first that's always a good place to start because then you understand what the debit and credits are then referencing is not a problem drawing up journals isn't a problem doing an accounting equation isn't a problem okay the t account isn't a problem always try to do the journals as uh, the um, workings as much as possible before the journals right so that one you guys can try and see um, how that goes the answer should be in the textbook if you have any problems let me know so once you've looked at it if you're still unsure of where they got certain amounts maybe let's say you don't know where this came from or okay we know this is what a dishonored check that comes from a bank recon okay if you're confused with that transaction then bring things like that to class and let's discuss it okay if there's anything that you need me to help you with okay